Jesus not only described hell, but he also gave us a very clear understanding of what it would be like to experience it. And I just want to finish this talk by telling you five things he said hell would be like to experience. First, he said, be a place of intense physical discomfort. For one thing, there'll be no natural light there, total darkness. You may have your eyes, but you won't see anything because there'll be no light there at all. Kept calling it outer darkness. He said it'll be a very thirsty place where you'll beg for a drop of water. That's because it'll be a very hot place. Extreme heat, which is one of the most unpleasant experiences we have. And he also said it'd be a very smelly place. Sulfur is an element in most of the worst smells there are. And decaying putrefaction is one of the worst smells on earth. Hell will be a smelly place. Physical discomfort, a place of mental depression. Strange, Jesus said there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, but those seem to be contradictory. Weeping is sorrow, gnashing of teeth is anger. How could you have sorrow and anger at the same time? The answer is very simple. They both come together in frustration. And when you know the chances you did have and the chances you've missed and that you can never have them back again, there is a mixture of self-pity and sorrow and anger with yourself and anger with God. And it is this strange weeping and gnashing of teeth which Jesus kept repeating which points to this mental depression. It's a place of moral depravity. Can you imagine having to live forever with people who are totally depraved, who've lost all image of God, who are behaving like animals? A place where every vice and crime is practiced. A place where you have to live with it all place of utter moral depravity. No goodness there at all, no patience, no kindness, no love. I wonder if people realize that when you choose to live without God, you choose to live without goodness at the same time. Because all the good things that human beings are capable of comes from God. It's part of his image still left in us. And when that image is totally perished, that's the bit that goes. Therefore, it will be a place of social deprivation. You can be in the middle of a huge crowd and be totally lonely, right? Now, why are you lonely in a crowd? It's when you feel that nobody takes any interest in you, nobody cares for you, nobody loves you. And you can be surrounded by thousands of people, but if nobody cares for you and loves you, you can feel desperately alone. I believe everybody in hell will feel that social deprivation. Because once again, it's only God that's made love possible. Family love, friendship, it won't be there. And therefore, finally, it will be a place of utter spiritual desolation. Be no prayer there. What's the point of praying when there's no God to hear you? Be no worship there. What's the point of worshiping when there's nobody to worship? See, the worst thing about hell is that you have to live without God. Now people say, well, that's not so bad. I'm living without him now. No, you're not. In this world, nobody's living without God. His spirit is still touching people, still pleading with them, still restra ret restraining them from being as bad as they really are. But listen, when God takes the brakes off, we don't go uphill, we go downhill. When God takes his hands off, Romans 1 that we looked at last time, in Romans 1 it says, men gave God up. So what did God do? It says, God gave men up. And the results were pretty horrifying. See, if God gave you up totally, you would not be a better person. You'd be a very much worse person than you are. None of us knows how much restraint there has been in our life through the influence of parents or friends that have held us back from doing what we might have done. Sometimes you discover your real self when the restraints come off. When you're away from home and nobody knows where you are, that's when you find out who you really are. That's what hell will be like. Spiritual deadness. Nobody will ever have a thought about spiritual things. Well, that's what we choose. If we choose to live without God. We can't get right away from God here. But God can get right away from us. In that third phase of our existence. Well, there are other things to say about hell, but that's enough for this time. And <laughs>